Catfish, lemonade, and the American dream. Probably not three things that you typically put together. But I'm excited to tell you my story and kind of the quest that we're on for America's youth. As you heard, I'm an entrepreneur. I've started and grown another, a number of computer technology companies. My last big one I sold to Sprint. And when I did that, that changed my life. I think by most any measure, you could say that at that point, I achieved the American dream. Well, that's pretty exciting, and it gave me an opportunity to really do and think about lots of other things. So I read this book called From Success to Significance. And, and the essence in this book is pretty simple. Okay, big fella, good for you. You made a lot of money. But now, what are you going to do to give back? What are you going to do to change the world, to make it a better place? Well, I was pretty intrigued about that, and so I started thinking a lot about it. Um, so what would I do? What do I care about? Am I going to go save the whales? Am I going to hug the trees? Am I going to cure a disease? Um, do we feed the homeless or take care of the elderly? I mean, there are lots of different things, but I'm a technology guy. I think about the future, and I think about where we're going, and I think about where we're not going to. So when it came down to it, I started thinking a lot about America and where we're going. And not just America, but the American family and the youth of America's family and where are they going. And, you know, there's a lot of things that are not going exactly like we'd like to see them happen. So what I decided to do was that I was going to uh, I was going to work with at-risk kids. That I was going to, uh, it, I mean, no, if you're, if you're going to change the future, it's the adults that messed it up, so if you're going to fix it, you, you got to do it with the kids. They're the only future we've got. So I started a foundation called the Holt House Foundation for Kids. And I was focusing it on life skills and character and uh, wanted to really help them uh, rise above the situations that they're in. Now, now let, me give, let me tell you what I mean by at-risk youth. These are the kind of kids of which there are millions of them that are as bright and as capable as any in the world. But for a whole host of opportunities, they can't even see the opportunities in front of them. They're growing up in environments which are not conducive to creating healthy, happy, contributing members of our world. So, uh, I decided to take a year-long learning journey where I went around the country and I uh, was looking for programs that were renowned, full of best practices, having big impact on these kind of youth. And uh, I, I asked a lot of questions not about the symptoms, but the kind of questions that you would ask. What are the underlying problems? What are the issues in this community? So one of the first things I learned was the American family is a mess. When you look at this at-risk population, which is largely the poor, it is, uh, well, dads are gone. Because dads are mom, gone, mom has to take care of the family. Mom is either working three jobs just to try and keep up, or she's misbehaving, in which grandma or someone else in the family has to take care of the kids, and this has a big impact on the kids. Divorce rates are out the roof. Teen pregnancy is a dramatically growing problem. There's uh, drugs and gangs and moral decay just the very notion of what is a family is, uh, is a significant question. I mean, when you have this many divorces, in one family, there could be four different dads, there's two different stepmoms, there's, I mean, it is complex and confusing and a real challenge. And, and these families are doing the best they know how, but they're struggling. You know, the, the families, uh, so, so I, I want to ask you a question. 
that kind of came up in, in all of this. Do you give a man a fish or do you teach a man to fish? Now, I suspect every one of you in here already know what the answer is. You go, well, of course you teach a man to fish. Well, because if you give him a fish, you feed him for a day. But if you teach him to fish, you teach him for a lifetime. Well, so that was kind of our first clue. What we need to do is teach these kids to fish, teach them how to rise above the problem. But then I started asking myself, well, why is it, as a country, we're spending all of our time giving away fish? Um, this notion of entitlements uh, is, is a real issue because it is at the very heart of generational poverty. Uh, the families out there have been poor and have propagated being poor for many years. And we don't have time to go into entitlements, but entitlements are really costly. And I'm not talking about the cost in terms of dollars and what that means to our country. I'm talking about the cost of what it does to the victims that are caught inside that system. We have got really incredible people that because of uh, our generosity as a nation, we have said, well, we'll give you some fish in the short term until you can get on your feet. But the unintended consequences is that, is that they get locked into the system. And it develops apathy, it removes their incentive in life, and it basically erases the, the American dream for these families. It's those unintended consequences that are so important as it relates to this group. So. Uh, we're kind of moving along and asking more questions. And so they said, well, the way out of poverty is education. Well, of course, of course it's education. But it turns out it's not the education that you think. See, when most people think of education, they think of school, reading, writing, math, science. Uh, they think of government education where we have standardized tests, where we're teaching kids how uh, all of the academic pieces. Well, as I started diving into that, one thing became very clear, that there is effectively no correlation between academic success and life success. No correlation. So when everyone is saying, well, let's get these kids educated, they're talking about an education that does not help them or prepare them to be successful in life. Well, that's interesting. So if academics isn't doing it, well, what is? I mean, here's a, a little anecdote, if you would. In the last 30 years, the United States has gone from the highest educated population across the world to 32nd and dropping fast. Our schools aren't really doing anything different. We still have a teacher in the front of the classroom that's teaching all the kids, telling them they're taking tests. That hasn't changed. Well, if that hasn't changed, what has changed? Did the rest of the world just get smarter and are working harder and now we have to compete against it? Well, maybe there's some of that. But the big issue is that the family changed and therefore the kids that are, are the product of those families are different and they show up into our schools thinking different uh, and, and to the point where our teachers are spending upwards of 40% of their time dealing with issues that are family issues, have nothing to do with academics at all. But there's a second set of education that it turns out to be most important of all. Now, it goes by lots of different names. Uh, social and emotional learning, asset building, the whole child, uh, life skills, character education, um, you know, and the list just goes on and on. 
And what these skills are the things that our parents are supposed to teach us, but sadly, in too many situations, aren't teaching us. So, um, it's like hard work and determination. It is having a vision for your future. It is a uh, moral compass that drives your life. It is knowing who your friends are and who your friends aren't. It, it is all of these different pieces around communications and hard work and trust and integrity that frames things for us in life. So with all of this, I came back to Houston and I started an organization called Prepared for Life. And I think Prepared for Life is indicative, the name, of what it is that we're trying to do for kids, to teach them these life skills and character elements. We're doing a bunch of after-school programs and that's all going really good, until one day, my precocious little 10-year-old daughter named Lissa comes up to me with one of her typical questions. Daddy, can I have a turtle? A turtle? Listen, you've got three dogs, two cats, a tank full of fish, you've got rabbits. What on earth would we do with a turtle? But Dad, they're so cute, I can pet them. Pet them? Have you ever pet a turtle? The head goes in, you got a rock. What do you do with a rock? <laughs> Lissa, no, we are not doing a turtle. So all day long, she's dogging me about this silly turtle. Lissa, we are not doing a turtle. So the next morning, I think we're done. The next morning, bright and early, at 6 a.m., Lissa comes bounding into the bedroom, jumps on top of me, Daddy, Daddy, let's do a lemonade stand. Oh, now, that's about the last thing on earth I want to do at 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning, but she, she is insistent. So before you know it, we're out on Memorial Drive, we've got our lemonade, we're all set up, and we're, the, the cars are moving, it's... Dad, why aren't they stopping? Well, gosh, Lissa, I, I don't know. What do you think with all of my new knowledge that I've learned? I says, well, maybe they can't see our sign. Okay, well, so she goes and moves the sign, and before you know it, uh, more cars are coming up, and we're about 30, 45 minutes into it, and Lissa is holding this fistful of cash, and she says, Dad, look how much money I've made. <laughs> well, that was the point when I had to explain to her the difference between revenue and profit. <laughs> the notion that I was going to charge her for all of this stuff was just like unbelievable. <laughs> I didn't have the heart to tell her about taxation. <laughs> so we're kind of moving along. See. What I hadn't figured out that early in the morning was there's this direct correlation between the turtle and the lemonade stand. Lissa had a goal, and this is how she was going to accomplish it. So she figured the more she learned, the better off that she would be, she'd make more money, because she wanted the turtle pond, the, you know, the whole deal. So uh, before you know it, we're talking about how the ice ch chest is part of the capital equipment of the corporation. We got fixed costs, we got variable costs, we got, you know, we're selling perishable goods, and she's listening. It was one of the most amazing days of our life. I could not get it out of my head. Um, Lemonade Day was born. I'm thinking, I go out to Google and I type in characteristics of an entrepreneur. And what, and what comes back is it's all of these life skills, all of these character, all of this learning is what the entrepreneurs are great at. And so um, I go, well, we got to do this. So what is Lemonade Day? We teach youth how to start, own, and operate their very own business, a lemonade stand. We go everywhere where there are kids. Public schools, private schools, charter schools, home schools, neighborhoods, businesses that want to do this with our kids, faith-based organizations, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, YMCA, all of them. And we ask them to do a lemonade stand with their kids. And they go through this step-by-step -step process learning every single aspect of a business, from setting a goal, to making a plan, to uh, getting a loan for the seed capital of their business, and then all of them start their businesses on the same day 
we call Lemonade Day. Well, so that's coming along beautifully, and uh, uh, we're growing like crazy. I mean, our first year, we had 2,600 lemonade stands. This year, seven years later, we'll do 250,000 lemonade stands in 38 cities across America. I want to show you what this is all about. Mom, Dad, can I have $10 to buy the latest piece of overpriced molded plastic? Sounds familiar, right? We have a whole generation of kids like Anna growing up all over the country that have learned plenty about how to spend money, but almost nothing about how to generate it. Anna was learning lots of things, but not the decision-making and leadership skills that she will need to be a business leader of tomorrow. Fortunately for Anna, she had the opportunity last year to participate in Lemonade Day. There, she learned how to run a business, learned how to make profit, learned how to make critical decisions, and most importantly, she learned that she could do it. She could accomplish her goals. One day of selling lemonade changed the trajectory of her life. Pretty sweet, right? Anna's story is pretty incredible, and there are thousands more like her all across the economic and social spectrum, which is cool. But what would it look like for our future if it were millions of kids instead? That's something that could change the trajectory of our country. And that's where you come in. See, for every kid like Anna, there was a person, a leader, or an organization who used their business knowledge to support, teach, and build into her. They are using their skills and know-how from today to train the entrepreneurs of tomorrow. They understand that Lemonade Day is way more than just a one-time event. It's a chance to change the direction of our country and every life involved. Find out more at LemonadeDay.org. So what is Lemonade Day all about? It's about teaching the American dream. As, as a, a, a really great little 12-year-old African-American student, when I asked him about Lemonade Day, and I asked him, what did you learn? He said, well, what you taught me was that, that I got, first I got to decide what it is I want. Then, when I know what I want, I can put to pl a plan together in order to make that come true. And then if I work hard on that plan, then I can achieve my dream. This kid made $300 in Lemonade Day, net $300. And then he looked at me and he said, how come nobody's ever told me that before? That's when it hit me. Lemonade Day is all about the American dream. So this question, do we give a man a fish or do we teach a man to fish? What I want to do is teach him how to own the pond.